Good day. This is Bennett, also known as Jeremiah. Today we're going to talk about the clear explanation and the clear way to memorize translations of cubic graphs. If you're interested in more videos, the playlist is on the top right of the video. It's also found at the end of the video. So, let's begin. Alright, let me use this particular graph to explain the situation. So, let's say you're given this particular graph. Let's say it's f. So, let's just say you're given that f at x is equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So, you're given this particular graph and let's say they ask you for which values of k will the equation of the graph f at x equals to k have two distinct roots. So, first of all, what are roots? Roots are your x-intercepts. So, this particular graph has three different x-intercepts. In other words, it has got three distinct roots. So, now I want you to notice something. Alright, so now notice the position of the x-axis. Notice that the x-axis is in the middle of the Cartesian plane, right? Halfway through the graph. So whenever the x-axis is around the middle, we have three distinct roots or three x-intercepts. Now, whenever it comes to this type of questions, you're always going to be focusing on the y values of the turning points, right? So this specific y value is 8 and this specific y value is 12. So I'll show you the significance of it. Now, notice uh, this specific y value is 8, right? Now, I want you to notice something. Notice that if I take the x-axis and I shift it 8 units upwards, notice that the graph now has two distinct roots. So, whenever we shift it the same y value as the turning point, it has two distinct roots. So, now notice this specific y value is 12, right? So, notice what will happen if I take the x-axis and I shift it 12 units downwards. So, if I shift it 12 units downwards, the graph also has two real roots, right? So, it has two x-intercepts. So, let's shift it back to the zero position. So, now notice that if I shift the x-axis 8 units upwards, the graph will have two real roots. Or if I shift it 12 units downwards, the graph will have two real roots. So, all you'll do is that you'll say k must be equals to the first y value of the turning point, right? or that k must be equals to the second y value of the turning point. So you just simply say k is equals to the first y value of the turning point, or k must be equals to the second y value of the turning point. So, it's that simple. Now let's deal with another type of question that might arise. So now, they can ask you, for which values of k will the graph have three distinct roots? So, we've already agreed that whenever it is around the middle, the graph will have three different x-intercepts. So Notice that no matter how I shift it, as long as it's around the middle, the graph will have three x-intercepts, right? So, no matter how I shift this graph, right? As long as I don't shift it up to 8 units upwards, and also, as long as I don't shift it up to 12 units downwards, right? So, I'm allowed to shift this graph anyhow, as long as the shift is less than 8 units and less than negative 12 units downwards. This particular graph must shift less than 8 units upwards, and less than 12 units downwards. So, it must be between 8 and negative 12, right? As long as the graph is between 8 and negative 12, the graph will have three different x-intercepts. So, this is what you'll do. So, let's talk about the question. So, how will you answer the question? So, this is what you'll do. All you'll do is that you'll take the smaller uh, y value of the turning point and you'll put it at the start and you take the bigger y value of the turning point and you put it at the end. So you'll tell them that k must be between negative 12 and 8. So whenever they ask for three distinct roots, it's going to be obvious. You take the smaller y value, you put it there. You take the bigger y value, you put it there. And you tell them k must be between. So whenever they say it must have three distinct roots, you'll just tell them it must be between the y values of the turning points. So we're going to deal with higher level questions after this. So the, um, let's deal with another type of question that they can ask. The last kind of question that they can ask. Just before I continue, if you want to be cheated, whether it is online or physically, whether it is the situation where you are struggling in maths or whether it is the situation where you are good in maths but want perfection, take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEP, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you are doing no matter which country you are at, 
we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week. We also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvement. So after this, I'll show you some uh, uh, different type of uh, different ways the question can appear. So the first type of question is when they ask for two distinct routes. The next type of question is when they ask for three different routes. Now they can ask for when it will only have one real route. So what will you do? So now I want you to notice something about the x-axis. If we shifted it more than eight units upwards, the graph now has only one real route, right? Or even if we shifted more than 12 units downwards. So if you shifted the graph more than 12 units downwards, the graph will have only one real route, only one x-intercept. So whenever I shift the graph, so whenever I shift the graph more than 8 units upwards, it has one real route. Also, if I shift it more than 12 units downwards, it also has one real route. So how do we put this into the equation? So all you'll do is that you'll tell them that k must be greater than 8 units, right? So it must be greater than So you'll downwards. tell them that k must be greater than 8 units upwards. you also tell them that k must be smaller than negative 12 because it has to shift more than 12 units downwards. So this is a pattern. All you'll do is that you tell them that k must be bigger than the y value of the higher turning point and smaller than the y value of the lower turning point. So we're going to deal with different types of questions. So let's just recap the three types of situations. So if they tell you for which values of k will the graph have two distinct roots, all you will tell them is that the uh, k rather must be equal to the first value of the turning point, right? The first y value of the turning point, or that k must be equal to the second y value of the turning point. If they ask you for which values of k will the graph have three distinct roots, then it means that uh, the x-axis is allowed to vary, right? The x-axis is allowed to be anywhere between, right? So k has to be between the two y values of the turning point. So all you'll do is that you'll put the smaller y value first and the bigger y value after. And you'll tell them that k must be between the smaller y value and the bigger y value. And then let's deal with the third situation. So what if they ask you for which values of k will the equation have one real root? So for it to have one real root, you'll just tell them that the shift must be bigger than 8, right? So k must be bigger than 8. So you'll just tell them it must be bigger than the higher y value, right? And you say, so you say, oh, it must be smaller than the lower y value. So that's how it is. All right, let's just deal with two um, questions that can come out, two um, weird questions that can come out. All right, so here is another question. So you're given this particular graph and you're asked, so you're asked for which values of k will the equation g at x minus 7 be equals to k have three distinct roots, right? Just before I continue, if you're interested in knowing the prices of the tutorials, the video that contains the prices and the updated contact details just in case this ones have changed is found at the end of this video. So you're given the stuff and you're asked for which values of k will this equation have three distinct roots. So you can pause the video and try this out. And then you compare. Alright, so now, we know that this is a vertical shift. So the graph is going to shift 7 units downwards. So it means this particular portion is going to shift from 7 to 0, right? So now we're going to have it as 0. So let's just do this. Let me just change this to 0. Actually, this will be at the x-axis, but the drawing doesn't matter. So, we have 5 is to 0. And then this particular portion is going to shift 7 units downwards. So, therefore, this is going to become negative 11. So, for it to have three distinct roots, we just know that the x-axis has to be between these values, right? So, all you'll do is that you'll take the smaller x value. You start with it first. So, you're going to say minus 11 and then you take the bigger value you end with it right and then k must be between and the signs will always face like this by the way so there we have it let's go to the final question of this video all right here is a particular question so you are given this stuff 
and this time you're asked for which values of k will the equation 2 times g at x so i meant to say 2 times g at x so will the equation 2 times g at x be equals to k have one real root so what do you do when there is a number in front this time so if there is a number in front what you have to understand is that is that it doubles the amplitude so what will happen is that the height will double right so this actually affects the amplitude so it affects the vertical stretch of the, gra the graph so what you're going to do is that this is going to double because this two uh, is a factor of two uh, it's, it's rather telling us that it's going to double right so it means that this will move from 12 to 24 so this will become 24 so now we're going to have 24 and then this particular portion will become 16. so if they ask for which village of k will the roots will it have one root right will it have one real root so we know that for it to have one real root the shift must be greater than 24 right or less than negative 16. so what you'll do is that you'll just tell them that k must be bigger than 24 right it has to be more than the highest value and then it has to be less than the lowest value so that's how it is so k must be less than the lowest value and there we have it all right we have reached the end of this video i have included a playlist of similar type of questions if you enjoyed this video please like the video and subscribe to my channel any questions of god or any video you want me to create please comment below see you in the next video